this is an oscillator using an inductor and a capacitor to generate the oscillation. So to generate an oscillation using an inductor and a capacitor, you have to tune them to each other because um, they pass current backwards and forwards between each other. Um, I'm using two AAA batteries over here, so it's about three volts going into the circuit. Uh, and I've got 10k um, from the positive into into the um, inductor. Uh, and 10k resistor is just to limit the current so that not all current is going into the inductor. And then from the inductor I've got in series with that a capacitor. So the inductor is at um, 100 micro henry uh, and the capacitor is 100 picofarad. And they have to be tuned in order to generate this oscillation which you can see on the oscilloscope over here. Uh, and the output of those, uh, the inductor and the capacitor, where, where the, they connect to each other goes into this transistor just used to... Um, to amplify the signal um, because otherwise the signal would be too too small to see on the uh, on the oscilloscope. Um, and this actually um, oscillates at quite a high frequency. Uh, the, the frequency on this oscilloscope is measuring wrong. Uh, I'll show it on on my main oscilloscope after this uh, sh to show the actual frequency. Um, it's it's pushing the, the oscilloscope right up to its limit, so it's right on its its um, fastest setting. Um, so it's quite quite a high frequency, and it's uh, generating about 0.4 of a volt um, coming out of it. And I've just got, uh, just on the output, I've got a capacitor um, to take away the DC uh, part of the uh, oscillation, at uh, the amplified oscillation that is, and uh, I've got a resistor in series with that, um, and then, get, then going into the oscilloscope. Um, and the reason I've got that is um, because the oscilloscope itself has got some internal resistance and capacitance, and if you don't have that, it actually um, changes the shape. Um, let's see if, what happened if I go over here? So you can see it's all distorted. Uh, it doesn't um, show a very good shape. So if I use a capacitor just to take away any DC uh, and just reduce the current a bit with a with the resistor, that that um, isolates the capacitance of the um, the oscilloscope and stops it from affecting the shape of the wave. So this is the signal on my uh, oscilloscope um, and. I'm pushing the oscilloscope right to the limit because I don't, don't have very good oscilloscopes. Uh, and it's at one microsecond per division. And it's about 0.6 of a division for one cycle. So it's 1.6 megahertz it's running at. Uh, and the channel is on uh, 0.2 of a volt per division. So there's two of them. So that's about 0 0.4, 0 0.4 of a volt. And it gives uh, this um, oscilloscope, although it's still quite cheap actually triggers properly so get a nice still image of the of the wave there's a nice clean waveform as well a nice sine sine wave that's very clean i've got another prototyping board here which has got an inductor on it which is a medium wave and long wave antenna uh, and it's the same principle as the oscillator which i just showed which is the inductor here um, is put in series with a variable capacitor which is here which is the basis of a radio and they're tuned to oscillate at a certain frequency and when uh, the radio waves uh, uh, come into the aerial they actually oscillate so you tune it to the station you want the frequency you want and this will then resonate at that frequency and then you can then take that out into an amplifier and uh, for AM you just amplify it and uh, you get a radio, a radio station so it's very so the basic principles of radio um, uh, basically uh, operate around tuning uh, an oscillator in such a fashion. This is the uh, the basic circuit of the oscillator, and it's the most basic part is the inductor and the capacitor, and these are tuned to oscillate between each other. Now the values that I've got here they're just values which I happen to have in my component drawer because uh, I don't have. A particular the wide range of values, so I just found some which which oscillated. They probably don't oscillate as uh, as efficiently as they probably could if they were different values. Um, and the I've got three volts supplying the circuit, and this resistor up here it allows the transistor to um, take the current out of the inductor. So when the transistor turns on. Um, the, the, it will take the current out of the uh, inductor and straight down to ground and that generates the, the oscillation so the, the inductor will first start 
um, charging the capacitor. Uh, and then once the capacitor is charged, there'll be a back EMF through the inductor. And this point will be, this this point will switch off the, or switch on the transistor, which will short out the current in the, um, in the inductor. And once that's shorted out, then the capacitor can discharge up through there. And, uh, and then once the capacitor is discharged, it can uh, then start charging the, uh, it, the capacitor again through the inductor. That's the basic principle, which I believe is correct. <laughs> Uh, and this extra bit of circuit over here, this is just to, for the for the uh, oscilloscope. So I've got a capacitor which takes off the DC of, of any signal which is at this point, uh, and then I've got a 4K7 resistor just um, just to make this signal on the oscilloscope a bit a bit cleaner because um, it's a very uh, it's still a very weak signal really, and uh, if you take too much current out of the circuit, then it can affect the shape of the circuit. And also any like capacitance or resistance in the oscilloscope itself can um, can affect the signal, and so this just like isolates the oscilloscope from the circuit a bit to to prevent it from distorting. And then I've just uh, put a basic a little bit bit of a circuit over here of of the kind of thing you get in a a radio um, receiver. So you've got like a a bar, a bar antenna and a variable capacitor and and kind of tunes the uh, the signal coming in from, from the radio. But if you take a look at the way that, um, that the capacitor and um, inductor tune, oops, that's not very good. They kind of have, have bands of, of, of tuning. So you might have, uh, so on the inductor, the, the bar antenna you saw that I had, there were two, there were two coils on there. One would be like a medium wave coil and one would be a long wave coil which is different bands uh, because when you vary the capacitance and the inductance or well, the capacitance over the inductance of the say the medium wave band there's only a, a limited a band in which you get a good uh, resonance which would be maybe here and then off of both sides of that it kind of drops down the resonance so that it becomes less effective so a long wave band at uh, different frequency the the usable part of the bandwidth where where it oscillates well is again limited um, and then it will drop off again each side so you need when you're using capacitors and inductors to do this kind of thing I think you need um, specific uh, values to get best um, the best resonance 